This is Toby's Roadmap to Success. Sit. Sit. Remember, anytime you're giving a treat, the treat should go in the mouth first, and they should hear the command word immediately after the treat goes in their mouth. Come. Uh, that's passive training. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the first thing we did was we talked about uh, exercise. He is a, spry, a very uh, uh, athletic dog. He's a little bit thin. Uh, he was very thin when the Guardians uh, adopted him when he was five months. Um, but he probably could put on a little bit more weight. He has some eating issues because he likes to eat when he wants to eat. So um, one of the things we did actually towards the end of the session, we talked about structured feeding. I have all these videos on my website, so go to doggoneproblems.com, click on where it says dog training tips on the right side of the page. If you're looking at it at a desktop, is a search box. If you're looking at your phone, it'll be at the bottom of the page. And then basically just type in structured feeding, and it'll explain how to do the structured feeding. Um, so basically, the first thing we talked about was exercise. I think he is dramatically under-exercised. Like a lot of my clients, do, uh, they just don't have the time to exercise them. So I went through some creative ways to exercise the dog. Throwing the treats on the stairs. Remember, all these exercises, the uh, make sure he's got an empty stomach. It should be about 90 minutes after he eats before we exercise him or exercise him before we eat. <clears throat> so this, uh, throwing the treats up and down the stairs would be one. Remember to come up with a funny command word to go up the stairs and to go down the stairs. And again, after he licks up the treat each time. Um, uh, the other one was the laser. He really liked chasing the laser. Fetch is a great one. Um, uh, pursuit games are what I call these things. Dog skiing, if you guys uh, really want to, would be a great way to do it. Um, and uh, remember, you can get an iFetch inside or a Go Dog Go uh, outside fetching machine. And it's pretty awesome, but if you just want to do it manually, that's fine as well. Remember, the first time we're going to do all these things with an empty stomach, we're going to max them out. Fetch until he says you're crazy. I've been fetched 102 times, I'm not doing it anymore. Now you know what the maximum number is. You want to start off exercising about 50 to 75% of that maximum number, whatever your best guess is, best guess. And then uh, we're going to keep the exercise journal. And so we're going to start, and scent games is another one. Just Google scent games. Um, and so basically the exercise journal will uh, allow us to kind of track. So you write down the date of the fresh page, fresh page of paper, fresh piece of paper, write down the date, write down the time and how many up, downs, and the stairs, the time and how long, how long he fetched with, uh, chased the laser. Um, how many uh, fetches, how long the walk was, how long the rollerblading was, all those fun things. Sit. Sit. Should be under the chin. Um, and uh, the idea is we want to uh, write down the time and how many. And then also if he was, crash, um, if he was barking at the door or if he's jumping up on the baby or one of the humans or any undesirable behavior, write down the time and what he did. And after a while we start recognizing the, the data allows us to start recognizing our process. Hey, every time it's longer than four hours, and he gets, uh, and uh, we don't, uh, that we've exercised him, that's when he gets in trouble. So let's just start exercising every three and a half hours instead of timer. And all of these pursuit games I talked about should be able to be achieved in about, really about three to seven minutes. And you, most of them you do inside. So it's a nice, easy way that you can do it. Remember, exercise is best done every two to four hours, sprinkled throughout the day. At the end of the day, give a letter grade at the bottom of that exercise journal, and then if it's anything other than A, the next day, play around with the values. Instead of doing maybe 53 up-downs on the stairs, maybe we do 75. Uh, or if it's really low, instead of doing the up-downs on the stairs three times a day, maybe we do it four or five times a day. So the idea is to come up with the right cocktail so that he is getting his needs met in terms of his exercise. And remember, we can also use exercise to set him up for success. Um, before the, the child comes home from daycare, he should get exercise, and he gets. He needs to have about five to ten minutes to recover. He shouldn't. Uh, his mouth is open here, but usually it's, we call that dry panting. So he should stop and be able to close his mouth before we take him to the dog park or where whatever it is. Um, so exercising before guests come over uh, will help make the exercise that we did in the video at the top of this a lot easier. Um, exercising him before the walk will make for a more, much more productive walk. Speaking of walks, I showed the Guardians how to uh, use a martingale collar and apply the special twist to the leash. That's the part that goes around the chest. Remember, always go through the martingale towards the head. Don't ever cross it up. Make sure it goes all the way around both, uh, uh, both uh, around his chest, so it's in both armpits. Use that sock if it does uh, start um, ebbing away on, uh, on his fur. Um, five rules for a structured walk. Remember, uh, I have those on my website as well. So be in your position, uh, loose arm, corrections to go straight up very, very fast. Uh, the first guardian was very slow in her correction, so pop it real quick up and down. We want to take the tension off the leash before he has a chance to pull against it, so the whole process should take less than a second. Um, and then uh, rule number four, no stopping and sniffing. We're going to give a one minute sniffing free time on each walk where you undo the uh, leash around his chest and you say free wherever you decide. Then after one minute we put it back on and then we continue and the next block he gets another free. So he gets a little bit of that. Um, if he wants to stop uh, to sniff, as long as you're walking, that's fine, as long as he continues. If he stops, 
you let your arm go limp and just keep walking and the red will keep him with you. And then no marking, but he's not really a marker. Now he did a little bucking bronco thing. If he does that, make sure you're uh, uh, started off in the grass so you can do what we did outside. I'm not gonna talk about it, but make sure you do that. If it continues longer than maybe, uh, uh, like longer than what we had out there or multiple walks, let me know, but usually it doesn't, it's pretty quick. Um, all right, so we also talked about uh, rules and enforcing rules so the guardians act like leaders, at least from a dog's perspective. They already don't allow them on the couch, so one of the rules is you have to sit at the door. I go to the door and I say, sit once. The dog doesn't sit within three seconds. I walk away, sit down nearby, wait one minute, then come back and tell him to sit again. If he doesn't sit this time, I walk away for two minutes, then four minutes, then eight minutes. Keep double length of time until eventually when you go and say sit, he sits down, then fly the door open as fast as possible. Eventually he'll go sit at the door is his way of saying I'd like to go outside. Eventually do it in both directions. Something I forgot to go over, don't let him race up and down the stairs ahead of you. It's blocked off, but don't let him go through doorways ahead. Whoever's in front is perceived to be in charge. Um, shouldn't be allowed to be uh, on the carpet if anyone's eating a snack here. And we're going to use uh, the uh, escalating consequences to move them away. So if like we're eating a snack at this table here, the whole carpet would be off limits temporarily. Not be allowed to pass the line from the edge of the carpet here when we're eating dinner. Not be allowed in the kitchen when we're preparing food. The rest of times he can come and go as he pleases. Remember to practice that out command that I showed you. So take a treat, rip it in half, go to every door in the house, throw it out about three feet outside. When he goes and licks it up, say out, have him come back, yell automatically. Throw another one. Do that for every doorway or area in the house. So if you want to do it around the doorway or around the dining room, throw one here, then go to the other side. There's a narrow gap between the uh, table over there. Uh, in the chair, and so you te and throw it in the hallway that way, so he learns to leave every room, and then repeat the whole circuit, but this time throw the treat into the kit, into the dining room, call it dining. Throw one in here, call it media, call it in the kitchen, so on and so forth. So now we've created a command to leave every room and go to every room. Uh, let's see, uh, other rules, um, uh, the humans need to eat something before they feed him. Uh, remember, you're gonna eat something in five more bites, we're gonna put food, uh, put the food down first. Well, actually, first we're gonna make him leave the kitchen the way I showed you. Then we're gonna walk backwards. Remember, two steps, pause. Two steps, pause. Keep your hips pointed at him. Eventually, you won't have to do that. Probably after about a week, you probably start turning around, but always watch out of the corner of your eye. Um, and then eventually get back, put his food in the bowl, put it down at any point across the threshold. You stop and rush, hit, hiss at the scent, make the hissing sound and rush towards him. But we only mirror him. So if he crosses the threshold, and I'm way at the back of the kitchen, it's a huge kitchen, if I'm way at the back of the kitchen and I start marching towards the dog and he's only one step across the boundary, I might be 20 paces away from him. Once he takes the one step back, then I stop where I am. I don't always have to go to the edge unless he's still across the boundary. Remember, he can be across the boundary like with his paw as long as he's respecting the spirit of the law, not trying to come in. So I'm going to mark, make him leave the room or toss the treat out and ask him to leave. Walk backwards, put his food in the bowl, put it back down. And then I'm gonna sit there and eat a chip or cracker or something in five more bites. Then I'm come invite him to eat his food. He is used to only eating once and he eats at dinner even though he's fed twice a day, he just leaves it. So if uh, I'm not gonna feed him uh, dinner if he doesn't eat breakfast. Otherwise he just isn't a habit of only eating late at night. And we need him eating more, he's under, underweight. So basically I put the food down and then I invite him to eat. Remember to use passive training. So the first time he takes his first bite of food, come up with a favorite meal or favorite restaurant and say, feast or lasagna or pizza or burrito or sushi or whatever your favorite food is. Every time that he takes his first bite of food for three months. After three months, you should be able to say sushi and he goes and eats the food. So once you uh, move, uh, uh, once he's outside the kitchen, you put food in, you back up, lean against the counter, lean against the wall so you're not between him and his food, then eat the chip or carrot in five bites. Then invite him over to come and sniff. As soon as he sniffs, he's on the clock. He, as soon as he walks more than seven paces away, pick up the bowl, dump it empty, put the empty bowl back down. I want him to recognize the bowl is empty. Oh, every time he gets water, walks through the kitchen. And if it goes longer than three days, please message me. It usually means somebody in the house is cheating for him, but I'm guessing it'll probably be about the second day that he'll eat. And then as long as he's eating uh, uh, breakfast, then you'll feed him dinner. I would look, uh, talk to the folks at the Green Spot. I'm gonna give you a card for the Green Spot. It's a neighborhood place, it's really convenient. But uh, talk to them about the food uh, to feed him. Make sure it's food that he likes. Uh, and then rotate the flavors each month. Maybe this week, this month it's mackerel, next month it's uh, wild rice, uh, you know, grain, or not grain, grain free. But different flavors, chicken one month, beef the next month, seafood the next month. Uh, same core component, same brand, but different flavors. Um, all right, we also talked about passive training and petting with a purpose. Petting with a purpose, he's a big nudger for attention. So when he does that, we're gonna give him a counter order, tell him to sit or to lie down. If he's already sitting here, you have to sit over here. He has to do something to pay for his attention by 
offering some desired behavior. After a while, he'll start sitting to prepay for that attention. When he does, make sure you pet him under his chin and say whatever the command words. You can actually pet him wherever you want, just don't avoid, uh, just avoid patting on top of his head. Remember to say just the command word, not good sit, just sit. And then you pet him as much as you want. Um, after a while, he'll start sitting to prepay for that attention. Make sure we do pet him at least once you recognize doing that, otherwise he'll go back to nudging and jumping. We also use passive training. Passive training is just every time he does something we want, we're gonna pet him and say the word of whatever he's doing. If he walks up to me, I'm gonna pet him and say come. If he lays down, crash. If he stretches, call it stretchies. Um, bark, speak. Uh, brings you a toy, name all your individual toys. I'd also like the guardians, make sure that you have uh, about probably two antlers, two bones, uh, a couple of nyla bones and different shapes. They come in all sorts of circles and Ys and all sorts of different stuff. And also they come in different flavors than nyla bones do. So the nyla bones should be rigid. They should not have any flexibility to them whatsoever. I also like giving my dogs water buffalo horns. And then I gave them a bully stick. My feet are gonna go sleep. I gave them a bully stick when I first got here. I like the odor-free bully sticks from the, uh, and the, I gave them a bully bite from the green spot. They're a little bit expensive, but they're, they don't smell after your dog's gotten done eating them. That makes it, that makes it worthwhile. Um, so basically I would uh, give him those uh, when you have guests come over. I also like cow knees at the green spot. That's my dog's favorite. I always, those last for a couple days. You might also want to get a water buffalo horn. It will stink for about a, a week or two and after it won't stink, but it'll probably outlast the dog. But giving him appropriate things to chew on is really important. We didn't talk about this. The, the kids are pretty young, but I also like to give my dog a dog bed. I have videos on my website on how to teach them to do that. I like to tell uh, families when they have kids, I've read a lot of case studies about dogs that bite kids that have no history of being aggressive because the kids won't stop and kids just don't know. So I have a hard, fast rule that anytime that there's kids in the house, if the dog's on the dog bed or in the kennel, the children are not allowed, not allowed to interact with him at all. They can't entice him, they can't go neck. I'm standing, wait, wait, I'm waiting for him. No, you're not allowed to be in his area. So he needs a safe place that he can go to. If he knows I can go to the dog bed and I'm free, then I don't have to nip the children when they're doing things I don't like. Um, I also talked about keeping a, uh, starting a list of the vocabulary terms. Say the word vocabulary if we're using the wrong word. I say repeat or rerun if we're saying the word multiple times. Um, I also say paycheck if we're, uh, for petting with, you know, I catch someone I suspect petting without a purpose. I say recognize, uh, excuse me, I say testify now for passive training if the dog did something we like. Um, but come up with your own watch words for those sort of things. Try to come up with funny command words for any new tr uh, tricks or treat uh, commands that you give to him. There's gonna be kids in the house, the kids will just resonate more with their funny commands. And if it makes you guys chuckle, it motivates the dog to want to do those things. Um, I would like to see uh, you guys try to train him to do some new tricks and commands. Uh, dogs, the, well, the lighting just changed. Um, the tricks and commands uh, are a nice way to boost the dog's self-esteem and also to build a little bit more respect for you as the leader because you're the one that taught him how to do those things. Um, so uh, just maybe try to go to YouTube and just find a quick, easy dog trick. Teach him to do a circle. It doesn't have to be really elaborate, uh, but maybe this week you're going to teach him how to do something. Maybe next week she teaches him. And you go and, and if you teach him how to roll over, it should be roll over for everything. You want your food? Roll over. You want to pet you? Roll over. You want your toy? Roll over. After a while, he's just rolling over every time you look at him, and then next week you play bang your dad or whatever it is. Um, if he, uh, the other thing you might want to also do is have him practice being inside the kennel when you're there. Most of the time, the only time we put the dog in the kennel is when we're there. So what I would do is I would start getting like a bully stick or a cow knee. A lot of times what people would do is take a bully stick, and I told them to drill a hole through the bully stick and zip it to the lower back part of the kennel. The only time he can eat it is by being in the kennel. And you leave the door open but you can't leave the kennel with it. The other thing you can do is put him in the kennel and give him like a, uh, a, uh, a uh, county, one of my favorites from the green spot. Um, that way he practices being in the kennel and he's like, I don't wanna leave, I wanna chew this thing. And again, you, and when you do this, be in the room with him. So turn the, if you have a TV upstairs, watch a little TV in the bed, or just read in the bed next to, or sit next to the kennel. So, because otherwise a lot of the whining and whimpering is, please let me out, I, I wanna come with you. Well, I'm gonna hang out right here with you. You chew on the bully stick, and I'm going to sit here and read Forbes. And after a while, the dog Charlie is practicing being calm inside the kennel. Um, I tell you, I think I mentioned this earlier, but if I forgot, remember you can exercise him before the walk for a more productive walk. Practice leashing him up with times when you're not going to go for a walk. Um, I call this calm leash, and you can search for that video on, on dog on problems as well. So videos you might want to look for: uh, calm leash, petting with a purpose, passive training. Uh, uh, invisible boundaries to keep the kid out of the kitchen, or the dog out of the kitchen, escalating consequences, 
Um, let me see, uh, creative forms of exercise. There's a lot of stuff uh, that's on there. You might just go through and just check out the website. Um, but remember, anytime he's getting excited, stop interacting with him, stop petting. It's kind of a microcosm of the first video that we did with Hunter. All right, um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else you want me to cover? I think that's all good. I'm pretty good, I've done this quite a few times. All right, well this sleeping dog is Toby. And isn't he cute? He's a gorgeous looking dog. I'd like to see a little bit more weight on him though. So uh, one thing you might want to talk to the green spot about maybe giving him some, uh, some goat's milk. It's really more for bone density, but I would ask them about other things that you could do to, to put on some weight on him. He doesn't need a lot, but I mean, I mean, his weight actually seems pretty good. I can feel his ribs, I can't see him. He just looks a little underweight, but that, he's a mixed breed, so maybe that's just how he's built. So, um, but I think once you go to feeding him twice a day, he's eating on a regular basis. Sit. Remember, only say it once, sit. And then if he doesn't do it, then be on uh, different things. And if he jumps up on you, stand up. If he puts a paw on your arm, stop petting him. That's a domination move. And if he gets too close to you, you could stand up, which I'm not going to do because I'll be out of the shot. But uh, remember to practice establishing your boundaries. Um, there's nothing really wrong with him being this close if I invite him close. Uh, but try to practice uh, uh, delayed gratification boundaries. Like um, we have a new uh, child and so mom's breastfeeding. So maybe she goes to the nursery and breastfeeds there and he's got to stay right outside. He can see her, he can see the baby. He just can't come and interact. The more of those things where he has to practice self-control, where there's nothing blocking him between, but air between him and what he wants, is a great way for him to develop some self-control. Um, all right, well, let's come over here. You've got to sign off if people need to see you. Here, I'll let you get that one. There you go. Toby, come here. Sit. Sit. This is Toby, and this is Toby's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you need it.